And welcome to the water cooler, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm David Brody. It's September 16th, 2021, and South Dakota is making some major moves in the fight to end abortion. And not abortion, but believe it or not, do-it-yourself abortion. Yes, those unfortunately exist. And thanks to none other than Joe Biden, who in April got the FDA to reverse policy and allow women to obtain abortion drugs through the mail without ever having to be examined by a doctor. The devout Catholic strikes again. As you can see, the left's obsession with mailing everything doesn't end with ballots. And per usual, it was all justified by COVID. Well, you know what? Gee, thanks, Joe. Wouldn't want anyone to risk getting an illness with a 1.6% mortality rate. Instead, taking a sketchy pill at home to end a baby's life is surely the safer bet. Silly me. Look, it's an upside down world we're living in right now, but not all hope is lost. After the Supreme Court's recent decision to uphold the heartbeat law in Texas, South Dakota, South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem is now banning the disgusting practice of DIY abortions and is vowing to make sure that South Dakota also maintains the strongest pro-life laws on the books. And joining me now to tell us about South Dakota's plans to end abortion and so much more is Governor Kristi Noem. Governor, great to see you again. Oh, it's wonderful to be with you, David. Thank you for inviting me. Well, look, your, your team there is reviewing uh, this new Texas law and current South Dakota laws as well to make sure that your state has the strongest pro-life laws on the books in South Dakota. Do, do you want to see a South Dakota law just like Texas? What's your view on, on that? Well, we reached out immediately to those who drafted and worked on the Texas law and are consulting with them on how that bill would fit in our statute as well. So yes, I think it was a fantastic win for us. It's great to see litigation like this um, come down on the side of life. And South Dakota, from the very beginning, has been a state that stood for protecting innocent lives and will continue to do that. I think when I first ran for governor, I promised that I would put someone in my office that their job description would be a pro-life advocate, uh, someone who defended and looked for opportunities to fight for those innocent children each and every day. Uh, and that is what they do in this law and this proposal is something we're certainly considering and looking to take action on in our state. Yeah, you've been doing it time and time again on this issue. There's something that's been going on under the radar. Many people don't know about this, but essentially the Biden administration allowing women to get abortions without even seeing a doctor. Uh, you're doing something different in South Dakota. Explain that to our audience, Governor. Yeah, I, I signed an executive order the other day to stop exactly what the Biden administration is doing. Listen, during COVID uh, pandemic, during the COVID-19 pandemic across the country, we saw a lot of governors take action to streamline the delivery of health care. Um, but one of the things that the Biden administration wants to perpetuate and to continue doing is to allowing people to access telemedicine. But what they want to do is to allow women to get abortions over telemedicine, which means they could literally call a number, talk to some stranger across the country or across the world and get the authorization to receive drugs that would cause an abortion. Now these abortions are four times more dangerous for women and it essentially um, you know, allows it a much easier process for people to end an innocent life. Uh, you know, in, in South Dakota, you know, we want to stand for protecting these lives. And it's so ironic to me, David, that for years, the left and the liberals have said that a woman's health and body is a discussion between her and her doctor. Well, now they're trying to take this to so far of an extreme that this decision to have an abortion, they say, can happen between a woman and any stranger on the internet. Uh, yeah. That if they just have a conversation or get a, a script through telemedicine, that they can end that baby's life. Uh, we're not going to stand for it in South Dakota. And my executive order will be in place until we can put it into statute during legislative session. Governor, you make such a good point as it relates to hypocrisy and the Democrats. I mean, Joe mm -hmm. Biden calls himself a devout Catholic. We hear all the time of the media. Talk, oh, he went to church again uh, and he mm -hmm. ran about restoring morality to the Oval Office. But he has pushed a far left agenda, especially on abortion. Your thoughts on the moral discrepancy here? Well, it, you know, people talk and say a lot of things, and we're used to that in politics. I, I, I have a quote that I use quite often that Teddy Roosevelt used, that it's one thing to know what is right to do. It's another to do it. Um, it's okay to know what is the right thing. You need to actually follow through and do what is right. And, and that's what this Biden administration um, is not following through on. Uh, what they are doing and the actions they're taking um, are not biblical. Um, and I know they 
they many times talk about being religious, um, but I think that it's really time for all of us to look at the actions of our leaders and see if they line up with the Word of God, see if they're biblical, and if they really are following through on those actions that God's called us to do to protect people, to serve people, and to really minister to them. Yeah, I think you're, you're echoing sentiments that a lot of Americans feel right about now. I also want to turn to va vaccine mandates uh, and your fight. Uh, against mm -hmm. them. What's the strategy and plan I, I know you're taking on or, or ready to chomping at the bit to take on the Biden administration? <laughs> What's the strategy and plan regarding vaccine mandates? How do you see all of this? Well, from the very beginning, you know, I have stayed as governor within my constitutional authority. I'm just a big believer that when a leader oversteps their authority, especially in a time of crisis, that's really when we break this country. I take my guidance from our state constitution, my guidance on what my job is from the U.S. Constitution. And, and make sure that I follow that because that is what has really protected our freedoms and liberties for hundreds of years. Uh, what President Biden is doing by these mandates coming down to businesses and employers that employ more than 100 people is unconstitutional. Uh, the constitution clearly states that there are limited powers for the federal government and that all other powers are delegated to the states. When it comes to health and public safety of individuals and the public, that that is the state's responsibility. That is the local government's responsibility, it's not the federal government. So I will, as soon as that guidance comes out, be filing litigation. And I have told the president that I would see him in court. And David, that's the unfortunate thing is that yeah. I went from being on offense with when President Trump was in the White House, being proactive and solving problems to as soon as the Biden administration came in, just being on defense, trying to protect my people. That's what I do every single day is just try to protect them from the damage that this administration is doing. Well, so I've yeah. already already signed an executive order banning uh, vaccine passports in our state. Uh, we've already made sure that our state employees in our state will not be requiring vaccine mandates, and then we'll fight the federal government when they try to do so as well. He thinks you and DeSantis, I mean, he's even said it, get out of the way, you know, that you're the, <laughs> the, you're the problem, apparently. I mean, it seems like that, that just has it all wrong. Well, his actions against our state have been very punitive very political. Yeah. Um, and this, this White House has not worked with us at all to help take care of our people. And that's unfortunate. Um, we would love to work on what we can work on. It's just that, boy, it's tough finding any common ground these days. Yeah. Uh, Anthony Fauci, I'm just curious to get your take on Fauci and, and the job, or some would say uh, the job that he's not doing. Um, what, what's, your, what's your take on Fauci? Do you think he should be fired? Not that Biden's going to fire him. He's in love with him. Well, Fauci's done a grave disservice to this country. What he has done is discredited our health officials. There's going to be a point in time where we're going to need to heavily rely on health officials to give us information and to be trusted. And he has completely uh, destroyed that model that, that we have trusted for many, many years. So yeah. um, I've, he's, he's been political. He's not been consistent. He has not followed the science. Uh, therefore, his credibility is down to zero. Governor Nolan, let me ask you about your message to those who not only don't want to get vaccinated, but are concerned about losing their job by standing up to these vaccine mandates. We're having folks on the show all the time that are willing to be fired over this. What's your message to people that haven't necessarily come out yet, but are thinking about standing up to these vaccine mandates? Well, what's your message to the folks of South Dakota and really the nation as well? I would just encourage people to study and get the facts. Don't believe everything that you hear on the news at night that the so-called experts are saying or what they read on the internet to really get the data behind making this decision and then make the best decision for themselves and for their families. To do that and to be willing to take action on that going forward. In South Dakota today, I have 27,000 open jobs. Uh, we'd love to have people move to our state and, and work here and be a part of our way of life. We're growing, we have the fastest growing economy in the country. We've got people that are moving here because they appreciate our stand for freedom and liberty. And I think people, it's, it's a tough decision when it impacts their livelihood, it impacts their benefits, their retirement packages. I hate that people are in this situation. I would just encourage them to really focus on the facts and the science and to make the best decision for themselves. You know, earlier in the interview, you talked about biblical principles, concern about the Biden administration. Uh, talk, and you and I have had this conversation before years ago about the spiritual state of our country. How, mm -hmm. concer how concerned are you? Uh, and I know we, a lot of times we t use the term spiritual warfare and people get freaked out. But, but really, there does seem to be a battle going on uh, in this country over values. And, and it does seem that, you know, 
uh, God seems to be in the center of it, and for the maybe the left in this country, maybe not the center of it at all. So, where where do, where do you see this uh, fight playing out in America from a spiritual standpoint? Well, we've seen our society, our culture degrade as we've removed God out of our lives, and people become what they spend their time doing. When I was growing up, we spent every Sunday morning, every night, every Wednesday night in church. We were, mm -hmm. our church family was a part of our life. We read the Bible every day as a family together and spent time with each other, recognizing that we were created to serve others. I don't know families do that as much anymore. And those biblical values are learned in the family and they're learned in church when the doors are open so people can be there and be taught. Uh, we in South Dakota, have decided to take action to really stand for biblical principles. We had a bill that was passed during legislative session two years ago that put the, the motto, in God we trust, in every single school building. It is displayed now in every K-12 mm -hmm. school building in the state of South Dakota. And I have legislation that I'll be proposing this year that will allow us to pray in schools again. I really believe that focusing on those foundational biblical principles that teach us that every life has value, every person has a purpose, uh, will recenter our kids and help us really heal this division that we see taking over our country. You know, Governor Nome, you're a rock rib conservative. Uh, you, you, you believe, obviously, in the, in the Bible and all of that. Uh, you've got some criticism that you've been receiving. I guess it's time to put on the armor of God, if you will. Uh, some even conservatives doing hit pieces. This is the one in the National Review today. Well, I, I just want to get your reaction. I'm not going to go through what they're talking about, but uh, they talk about ties to big business, uh, putting uh, interests ahead of social conservatism. But I want to get your your take on this because uh, it's not the Christie Gnome that I've known for many years. Uh, and, and But I am curious as to what what you think about all these stories. Well, it's not the Christie Gnome that I know, and it's not true. <laughs> and that's the, that's the part that's difficult about the press and the media today is that a lot of people think you know, we're used to having con conflicts with people who may be left or right of us, but but sometimes, you know, we're seeing these articles come that, that have untruths in them that come from our friends, and it gets shocking. Um, and that's really the day and age that we live in. Listen, um, what that article did not mention, it was talking about girls' sports. It does not mention that for the last six, seven years, I've been fighting to protect girls' sports, that when the legislature killed those two bills this year that would have protected girls sports, the very next day I signed executive orders that made sure that only girls will play in girls sports in our K-12 system and in our colleges. It did not talk about the fact that many of the people it was demonizing in that article, I've been friends with for 15, 20 years, long before the business interests were even there, right. uh, that, that we served in the legislature together as colleagues. And so the, the innuendo and the the twisting of truth in, that is prevalent today isn't isolated just to the liberals. Those on the right use it too. And frankly, David, a lot of people think I have future plans. I run want to run for bigger office. There's other people who want to run for bigger office that are Republicans and conservatives, and they're concerned I'm competition. You know what? Hmm. Go for it. Pound on me. Try to take me out. I don't. All I'm interested in doing is serving my people in South Dakota. That's my future plans. It's all Fair. I want to do. They're worried about the future. I'm not thinking about that at all. I love it here. I came to be governor of South Dakota because I want to be here with my people. So right. they'll attack me and try to do damage, hoping that it gives them more traction in the future. You know, the God said that we would have times of trial in our lives. Um, I'm going to choose to use them to make me a better person. Amen to that. I got 25 seconds left. Donald Trump, he wants to potentially run as well. Uh, Trump, uh, what's, your, what's your take on Donald Trump in 25 seconds? You could do a whole lot more than 25 seconds. <laughs> well, he's a fighter. And I went to 17 different states campaigning for him in this last election because I saw exactly what Joe Biden would do if he were given the chance to be in the White House. So, yes, absolutely. If he runs again, I'll be supporting him. Very nice. Governor Christy Nome, great to see you again. Thank you so very, you very you much. Too. Thank right. you, too. Thank you, David. Have a wonderful right. day. You, too. Uh, Governor Christy Nome, uh, I believe that's uh, where you cue the salt of the earth line. Uh, South Dakota, on the farm. She's got a great story. I've known her for a while. Uh, it, it, I'll be honest with you. It does not get any better than Governor Christy Nome. The conservatives just need to back off and give her a, as we like to say here, a colossal break. All right, we're back with Ken Cuccinelli talking about the border and the Afghan refugees in a moment.